Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where we are taking a look at the weirdest of the Valmets. This is a Valmet M82, and uh, these were actually mostly commercially imported, mostly into the United States, and almost all in 5.56 caliber. And they were manufactured, they're brought into the US between like 1982, as the designation suggests, and 1986. Of course, in 1986, the assault weapons ban, import ban, took effect, and this sort of thing was no longer able to easily come into the country. However, the development of this rifle goes back a little bit earlier. It goes back to 1978, when the Valmet factory decided to try and produce a specialty compact version of the rifle for paratroops, or maybe, presumably, anyone else who needed a particularly compact rifle. Now, the Finnish Defense Forces did have folding stocks on some of their rifles, and a regular Valmet with the stock folded is basically the exact same length as this thing. So there is some question as to how interested the Finnish military would have been in the first place. And turning a normal rifle into a bullpup like this, because that's exactly what this is. This is a Valmet M76 in a fancy urethane stock. Uh, doing that has some substantial downsides. Now, apparently the very first th this batch of prototypes uh, was made with wooden stocks instead of the urethane that they ended up using commercially. They were made in 7.62x39 based on the updated RK-62 rifles, and they were rather quickly rejected by the Finnish military. Um, how quickly I don't know, but I can bet it was a pretty pretty short trial period. Now, the one thing that is recorded in a bunch of sources is that apparently the front sight had a tendency to hit paratroopers in the face. That would be a bad thing uh, when they were jumping or otherwise moving around with the rifle anyway. Uh, definitely a bad thing. And then just a lot of the handling characteristics I think would render this unsatisfactory from a military perspective. So uh, why don't I go ahead and pull it all apart. We'll pull it out of the stock and show you what exactly they did to a Velmet to squish it into this thing. There are some bullpups out there that are really cool and have slick features for ambidextrous handling, whether it's forward ejection or bottom eject, or being able to swap which side the uh, cases eject out of. The Velmet M82 is not one of those. This is only set up for right-handed firing, and for about three different reasons. Uh, the safety sticks out the right side of the gun, the bolt handle sticks out the right side of the gun, and slams back and forth, uh, and the sights are actually offset on the left side of the gun. So you can just forget about using this left-handed. Underneath, this is still just a standard Velmet M76 action and system uh, that has been shoehorned into this stock. So things like the magazine release are the same, but with this minor change that the bottom, uh, the extra little tab on the magazine catch has been removed, just to make it a little bit lower profile. These do use standard Valmet magazines, which this is not one of. Uh, this actually I think is a 40 round AK mag. This is a 5.56 AK magazine that has been ground on a bit and modified to fit the Valmet, uh, which is not uncommon. Valmet magazines are quite rare. Uh, they were originally imported in both 15 and 30 round capacities in 5.56. So. Uh, this one appears to lock in place. I have used converted AK mags in other Valmets, and they usually work fine. Uh, but just so you know, this isn't the standard magazine for this gun. Nothing has been changed with the bolt handle. It still sits up here and cycles just like an AK. The safety lever is also uh, left in its original position, but this little lever has been added to it, so you can engage the safety like so, or like that. Uh, I'm going to remove this right now. This unscrews, and you have to, whoops, there we go, that came off. You have to take that out in order to remove this thing from the stock, so we'll just do that now. You do have a bit of a cheek rest built into this side of the stock, and they helpfully put a piece of hard plastic, I think, onto the side of the top cover. Doesn't do a whole lot for insulation, but it does at least mean that you're not, your face isn't on uh, sheet metal. So I guess that's a little bit of a help. The stock is a single molded piece, uh, polyurethane I believe, or urethane, and has a pistol grip molded into it. They have relocated the trigger forward, we'll take a look at that in a moment. They have also put uh, a, that same sort of plastic cover over the gas tube, because it's a lot closer to your hand now, and they decided that they should probably insulate that. And there's this nice bit of checkering to give you some grip on the front end of the gun. 
as you can see here, the sights have been offset to the left so that they kind of line up with the cheek rest and your face. We've got the rear sight, and it is still an aperture, which is nice. And the same thing with the front sight. It's interesting to note that the front sight block also has this kind of neat multi-port muzzle brake flash hider thing built into it. It's also wide open on the bottom, which seems to be the opposite of what you would want, but not entirely clear I suppose on what the design intent was there. Normally a Velmet would have its uh, serial number and manufacturing marks on the side of the trunnion here, but of course this is sitting under a stock now so you can't see it. So instead they moved the markings to the front or the rear sight block. So we have Valmet, made in Finland, and the serial number on the rear face. And then it's a little hard to see them, but on the front face it has the model and the caliber. So M82 and caliber 5.56mm. Disassembly is mostly like an AK, or at least starts like an AK. We're going to take the dust cover off. It's nice and tight as a Valmet dust cover should be. And then pull out the recoil spring and guide rod, and then pull the bolt handle back, pull the bolt out, and the whole bolt, bolt carrier assembly. Like the regular Valmets, the gas tube is also detachable there, so we'll pull that off. And at this point you would also need to take the safety lever out, which we've already done. Now to get the receiver out of its stock we have to remove this big old screw at the back. This just threads into the rear trunnion where you would normally have a stock. I suppose this does qualify as a stock. Anyway, that screw comes out. It does have a washer on it as well. Now there's a little hook at the front. However, if we can lift this out, and separate the stock channel there for the, uh, the trigger connecting rod, right there. Anyway, we can pull the stock off. These stocks, by the way, are a bit fragile, um, so if you have one of these be careful with that. So there's the new front end assembly. You can see the little pin there. That's going to lock into the front of the stock. It has a little metal reinforcing bracket right there. Pretty ordinary gas block on there, although it doesn't have a front sight attached to it. This has been added, a little clamp around the barrel, and your trigger. I have engaged the safety so the trigger is not going to uh, actually release, but that trigger is connected to this rod which comes back here and is then pinned into the remains of the original Valmet trigger which has had the trigger cut off, or rather it's a new piece that replicates the trigger there bends out of the way of the magazine and everything. This rear sight block has been added, pinned in place. The front trunnion is pretty much normal, the receiver is totally normal. In fact it's normal enough that it has all of the regular markings. So the serial number is on there, the Valmet marking is there on the back. These are standard Valmet receivers that were simply built into this bullpup configuration. We've still got the holes in here for uh, for the original trigger guard, the bolt hole for the pistol grip, all that sort of stuff. And that's pretty much it. The internals are identical to a standard semi-auto Valmet. So as I said, about 2,000 of these were imported into the US in 5.56. Um, they are definitely the weirdest of all the Valmets. They are not exactly a practical rifle, but they're a pretty cool, uh, interesting and unusual piece of rifle design. So especially the folks who are really into bullpup rifles, this is one of those bullpups that uh, was developed in the 1980s. People thought the, the whole bullpup concept was cool, and maybe they didn't think it all the way through. There are some good ones from that era, but the rifles converted like this are not the good ones. So, anyway, if you would like to see uh, Rock Island's detailed high-res pictures of this, or their description, or their value estimate, or anything like that, you can head on over to their website. They're, they have a catalog page specifically for this rifle. Uh, you can get there by way of the link to ForgottenWeapons.com in the description text below. Thanks for watching.